So uh, today we're going to talk about part five of the novel, and in this section, this is where uh, Robert's already faced, you know, so much hardship and suffering uh, at the hands of this unjust war, and the exploitation of uh, the soldiers has been already evident uh, in the lives that have been destroyed. Uh, we've already seen Robert or um, Rodwell, Taffler, uh, Levitt. Um, Bonnie Castle dies in this section. Um, so almost every young man uh, who we are introduced to throughout the novel ends up uh, either losing their lives or are, their lives are completely sort of destroyed one way or another. And uh, this is where we uh, see Robert's uh, fate, how this sort of young man uh, is uh, becomes a kind of victim of this military system and how he attempts to stand against uh, this dehumanizing uh, system that uh, just treats the young men as if they were tools and objectifies them. So uh, this part of the novel is again a very important part. Uh, there's a lot of sort of symbolism uh, conveyed in Robert's actions and uh, it's hard to read in parts uh, because of the sort of graphic uh, content of it. So there are scenes of brutal violence, uh, physical, uh, including sexual assault. Um, so it's an important part of the novel, but again, it's disturbing in the sense that we don't usually read about that kind of uh, subject matter. So it does uh, present a difficult uh, read. Um, so part five we have Robert it begins uh, he's just returned from his leave and he is in France um, but one of the things that has occurred is that his kit bag which contains all of his personal items including his gun, his Webley automatic is um, sent to the wrong station and so he does not have a gun. Uh, so this again puts him at a disadvantage and he feels as if he is already um, you know without his life support. So the tone of this uh, section is uh, somewhat uh, it has a kind of melancholy feeling where he is sort of reminiscing with nostalgia about his parents. Um, he has these sort of dreams of uh, his mother and father and uh, just old memories of um, their horse and a dog and their family. Uh, so there's sort of a sense of sadness or sort of the sense that he's lost something and will never regain that. Um, so it, it, it's kind of this dark tone uh, to this whole uh, last section of the novel. And then we get this interesting uh, description of Robert on page 169 where he's looking at himself uh, without his uniform on. So he's sort of naked standing before the mirror and really sort of assessing uh, his appearance and looking at uh, how he has, has transformed from uh, the young man who we knew was sort of athletic and uh, handsome. And here uh, it says, he could see himself now pale in the areola of candlelight in the mirror. It was a shock. He seemed like a fugitive. His beard and the shadows around the sockets of his eyes made him look like an old, old man. He smiled. He thought he would stand and see himself like a god in the glass, and there he was, a scarecrow. So this passage, uh, again, you could um, see it as, as representing that um, conflict between one's perception and the reality. So possibly Robert had this image of himself as a godlike uh, man, um, especially when you're wearing your uniform, you sort of feel powerful, like an authority. And uh, just the way that even Barbara put 
the men on a pedestal. Uh, you could see Robert was maybe doing that with himself as well, the way he sort of saw himself as this man who's now, he's no longer a boy, but he is uh, a powerful figure, uh, like a god. And then here's the reality of the situation, which is he is uh, pale and he looks older, right? And this, there's these dark circles around his eyes and he looks like he's aged. Um, and then he is so thin, he's like a scarecrow. So the reality and then his perception of himself are different. Uh, so his appearance in the mirror um, is a conflict with how he imagined himself. Uh, so I think Finley is doing something here with um, how he has sort of taken apart or deconstructed the ideal of m the soldier as this kind of masculine ideal. And then he gives us instances where these were just young men. Um, that they sort of believed in the war as a way of becoming men. And uh, here we get an instance where, you know, all it's doing is sort of sucking them dry, right? It's making them old and forcing them to grow up beyond their years. So Robert's still, you know, a 20 early in his early 20s and here he is looking like an old man having experienced so much death and hardship and struggle and watching all his friends uh and being estranged from his family. Uh this is what it, the results are, right? So he's sort of slowly corroding away. So Robert sort of muses about his appearance and then he decides that he wants to uh, go to the public bathhouse in France uh, in Desolé. Um And this would be sort of a space where uh, soldiers could come and then use the facilities, uh, you know, shave and wash themselves and uh, just feel sort of more like they have a, a space where they can relax. It's kind of, I guess, would be like a spa environment, um, but we don't really have public uh, bathhouse houses in the same way that they had then. Um, so Robert uh, goes here, and this is, this, this is where he is actually physically assaulted by a group of men. Uh, so he is uh, a rape victim, and uh, he is physically and sexually assaulted by a group of men who he then discovers are not um, the attendants who he thought were possibly um, the ones uh, that could be explained as being his attackers. Um, it's actually a group of soldiers who has sort of cornered him in an abandoned room and then uh, end up raping him. So at first, uh, Robert sort of, he believes that maybe it was the uh, inmates or the guards. Desolé is described as um, it's run by nuns, but all the attendants are... Uh, sort of inmates who have uh, mental disabilities and uh, Robert maybe believes that these uh, are the men who attack him um, but as it turns out uh, it's his fellow soldiers so Finley is definitely doing something here uh, with Robert's um, physical assault by other soldiers and he, this is sort of a, both a literal and a symbolic uh, experience in the novel. So Robert is attacked by a group of men uh, while he is sort of uh, vulnerable in this enclosed space. And it's quite a, you know, graphic description of what happens to him. Um, and it conveys that sense of helplessness, powerlessness that uh, any sort of um, person who is victimized in this way would experience. And some of the imagery is also uh, symbolic here. On page 174, he's uh, sort of 
rendered defenseless while he's trapped in this room. And then uh, the choice of words here is important. So uh, Finley writes, his mind went stumbling over a beach of words and picked them up like stones and threw them around inside his head and none of them fell in his mouth. Why? He kept thinking, why? Uh, so we have a stone image there. Uh, so you'll remember that from earlier. Uh, the, it sort of refers back to Taffler um, and that idea of stones, throwing stones. Uh, but Robert here is sort of, he can't even scream or cry out. Uh, he feels sort of completely uh, powerless, helpless in this instance. And then uh, he is sort of choked and uh, overpowered uh, by the men. Um, and he is assaulted by them. And then they leave him uh, on the floor, uh, naked and alone, uh, just, you know, completely defenseless and uh, victimized by this crime. And then he hears the words uh, that uh, confirm the fact that the, these aren't, you know, uh, the attendants, these are his fellow soldiers. So this is a sort of act that uh, is completely... You know, he never thought that would be possible, that, you know, men just like him would be capable of something this cruel and horrifying. Uh, but they say, don't touch his money, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, his assailants, who he thought were crazies, had been his fellow soldiers, maybe even his brother officers. He'd never know, he never saw their faces. So there's something very sort of symbolic about the fact that Robert is physically, sexually assaulted by... Uh, his fellow soldiers. And uh, Timothy Finley has commented on this section of the novel, why he included it. Uh, it's one of the more controversial scenes of the book, and um, he's sort of stated that it is a kind of symbolic act that Robert experiences. And the quote here, uh, Robert Ross and his generation of young men were raped, in effect, by the people who made the war. So uh, it is a literal act in the novel, like Robert is actually uh, physically raped uh, by his fellow soldiers, but Finley's also saying this is a symbolic act that connects the whole novel together in the sense that uh, Robert's generation of young men, so all these young men, including the young men who raped Robert, were all, in fact, uh, raped in a way by the people who made the war, so the people who started it in the military system that uh, used them as tools and objectified them, exploited them, uh, dehumanized them, uh, and this is the effect of that, right? So uh, anyone who is sort of treated inhumanely or dehumanized can sort of turn around and become the dehumanizer as well. Uh, so we can all sort of see how even the rapists, the fellow soldiers who raped Robert, were also traumatized in some regard uh, by their experience of the war. They became madmen, uh, just like those men who killed the cat that Rodwell uh, saw. Uh, these are men who maybe experienced extreme violence and things that they were not prepared to see, and it changed them. So really... Uh, this rape scene is all about the transformations that occur in the lives of these young men, in Robert included, uh, where they are no longer the innocent, uh, gentle, sensitive, uh, caring, compassionate young men that they started out as. They are now, you know, destroyed spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, you know, no longer the same men that they were. So that's the result, is that they become monstrous or mad or crazy or um, lose all sense of sensitivity or compassion for others. They lose their empathy, become desensitized, and become just violent and crazed. So that's the result of this war system that Finley is definitely... Uh, presenting an, a strong anti-war 
narrative.